Once again, this is Friday, May 15th, and this is Bad Mother Boogie. Man, I just, the more I do this, and we're in wrapping up week two today, the more I get an appreciation for all the great local artists. The Dean of Students will be coming up here, the disciplinarian. And he's lead guitarist here of Bad Mother Boogie. Also lead guitarist for Staff Infection. Let's have a little more listen here to Bad Mother Boogie. Great stuff. Once again, this is Wake Up SJV. My name's Eric Warnkin. Thanks for joining us on a Friday morning. Let's get a quick early look here, if we could, at the weather. I want to give a quick shout out as I load this up to senior at Fort Kent Community High School, Jace Rushlow. I believe I'm wearing his jersey, his old jersey. Today, number nine for the Warriors. Of course, no baseball this season, but we're looking to get those seniors one last game somehow. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, folks. So we're going to get um, the deuce on here in a little bit, and we'll figure out who the members are of Bad Mother Boogie. But, man, they're good. It reminds me a little bit of a band I watched down in the Portland area. I'm a graduate of University of New England by way of Westbrook College. Westbrook College does not exist anymore. They merged with my alma mater, UNE. But anyway, and down there in the old port, this, uh, there was a, a band. I think they're still cranking it out. Um, and now I forget the name of them. Motor booty affair. Anyway, let's take a look 
at the weather, brought to you by the National Weather Service out of Gray, Maine, also stationed here in Caribou. Boom. So, should be a nice, nice weekend here, folks. That wind has really been playing tricks on us. I, I dealt with it yesterday, two days ago. I just couldn't. It really got me down. I'm going to be honest with you. But yesterday, I was, you know, it was kind of like it is what it is. 38 degrees right now. That's three degrees Celsius for you, Mr. Dorman, over in Edmonston. 62, folks, is going to be the high today. That's awesome. Fabulous. Light south wind right there. Look at that. That is the best thing I've seen. So it's going to be an awesome day to be outside. We'll get into some outdoor events here momentarily. Just a little bit of, a little bit of uh, you know, whatever tonight. I'm going to spit a little bit on you. Um, Saturday, are you kidding me? 61. And look at Tuesday next week. High of 63. So here we go. Looks like um, we're really going to look at Wednesday next week. High near 70. So we're really getting a push here. People are going to be out and about. But stay safe. Pra continue to practice those safe social distancing uh, recommendations. And, and, uh, and you know, you're... you're, you're you know, I'm in the grocery store yesterday. I got a mask on. Mine's not the best. Not going to lie to you. I cut a sleeve off a T-shirt, and I threw that over my head. But it did the trick, as far as I know. But anyway, mask up, you know, when you cannot be six feet or more. And, and listen, there should be no pontoon uh, parties on, the, uh, on, on Eagle Lake. You know, 17 of those attached and people doing cannonballs. Uh, we're going to have to wait on that, but I'm no expert. Anyway, that's what we're looking at. We do have, once again, the Dean of Students, the DOS, and Mr. Steve Doucette, a real good friend of mine. So I want to thank him for getting up. He was a little nervous that he would be waking up the household there. So, um, But he will be with us here in about nine minutes. Let's dive into some news. Uh, once again, in the Valley, June 5 will be the last student day for all Valley Unified schools. We'll wrap up this remote learning. We'll get um, into the summer, okay, and uh, move forward. Graduation here, and the Deuce will get into his planning behind this, but the graduation here at Community High School will be January. Uh, January. June 12th on a Friday. Spring sports, of course, have been canceled. And the fall is really, I was on a, a statewide athletic director meeting, Zoom, yesterday, and we still just don't know. At this point, we don't know about the fall. We are just in planning and talking about what to do with the summer. But nothing, absolutely nothing will be done until after July 4th. And even then, we don't know what it's going to look like. So just, hey, be patient. If you're, a, if you're a student athlete and you're listening, either live or archived, then you got to do individual workouts, okay? Get, just you know, get some weights, body weight stuff, anything you need. Just, just crank it out, okay? And stay mentally sane. There is, folks, an integration plan, the four R's. And I'm going to put this on hold. We are going to share the screen maybe with Mr. Doucette. He can talk us through this. We're really going to put him to work here today. But there are some things that we want to talk about. But let's take a quick look at the Bangor Daily News headlines. I've got some stuff. I'm sure if you're like me, uh, you get into the, you know, you may read, used to be the paper, but we don't have that. Uh, well, some people still do get it, but um, okay, this is in the way. Um, um, there we go. That's my first um today, and it took 14 minutes. 
But if you're like me, you get into the into the articles and whatever kind of piques your interest. But I, you know, I went down here. This is the coronavirus morning update. So I, you know, I kind of went through it. Here's what caught my attention: hotels and other lodging establishments in Maine. Okay, this is huge because hotels, like you know, for example, we have the uh, the uh, the uh, wow. Why did I forget the name of our hotel? The 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 North. Uh, anyway, somebody help me. But we have our hotel here. Wow. Sorry, my apologies. It, it will come back to me. Lost a lot of brain cells in my days. Anyway, they can begin uh, reservations. Okay, to hotels can be begin June first. But here's the kicker. Northern Dorian, by the way. Sorry about that. Um, out of so that's for local in-state Maine residents. But if you're an out-of-state resident, you need to complete a 14-day quarantine before you can check into a hotel. So I know the hotels are trying to fight that. Um, and I don't know how, um, number two, I don't know how that would, uh, would look, would look, but anyway, there's one thing. Uh, this is pretty, pretty, uh, this is good news here. Hannaford supermarkets is hiring roughly 2000 workers at stores throughout its five state territory to, in, to handle increased demand. So Hannaford, we have one right here in town, Parity Shop and Save. Um, uh, I'm number three. Uh, Scarborough-based supermarket chain. So 182 stores statewide, uh, they're gonna be hiring. And I don't, I can't speak for parodies here in town, but that's encouraging. Down in Portland, down in the old port, one of the best places to uh, to congregate, if you will, in the state outside of, of course, Main Street here in Fort Kent. They have a plan to close streets in an effort to help restaurants because a lot of restaurants are going to try to go in and other businesses are going to try to go outdoors with their business in an effort to practice safe social distancing. So they're going to close down the streets of traffic, which makes sense. If you've been in the old port, it's pretty packed in there. And that's a, that's a good thought. No fireworks, blah, blah, blah. Here's something intriguing. Don't get freaked out, but cats can spread the new coronavirus to other cats without any of them ever having symptoms. So you know, I know if you're like me, you ask your animal, hey, do you have symptoms? And the animal says no. Well, they can still spread it. Uh, I just thought that was fun. And we just went down here a little bit. And that's pretty much the update from the Bangor Daily. Feel free to go on there, you know, if you, if you need to read it for yourself. We have the deuce coming up in three minutes. We're real excited for him to wrap up our week. This is week two. So what do you think? Give us some feedback here, positive or negative. Sometimes, like it or not, the best feedback is the negative. So you don't, you don't like my hair. You don't like my outfits. You don't like what I'm covering. We need to know what you're thinking. I want to thank uh, the producer, Mr. Chaz Pelletier. What a great guy. All the time he devotes to these great productions. Once again, this is on the St. John Valley live platform, but then it goes out to other various platforms, including the channel Four website, the channel Four Facebook page, which I have up on my phone. And I'm open for comments. I saw this morning uh, that we were roughly at nine live. We peaked at nine. Okay, I'm trying to get to double digits here at some point. I want to welcome Missy Sear, Patty Michaud, Abby Martin, all out there watching. Hopefully you stick with it. I know you're all here for the deuce because he is coming up. I, I don't know if he's going to have his – um, his pipes out. He, he may have his, his Metallica cut off shirt. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be in suit and tie like he's at work. I, we just don't know what to expect. I, I told him to make sure his hair looked better than mine. Coming up tonight, folks, this is going to be awesome. It's a big, busy night on the St. John Valley.live platform. 
we have Friday night warrior lights. So for the third straight Friday, the soccer field lights will come on at 820 in honor of the senior class because military time is 2020. I did not come up with that. That was a national thing that was done by a lot of schools and we just picked up on it. We're gonna play some music and run the clock for 20 minutes, 20 seconds. I think the score will be, you got it, 2020. Also going on, this is awesome. And we're gonna bring in the deuce here in a second, right after we go through this. We have on the line, on this platform, the UMFK Cares Virtual Trivia. I'm hoping and praying for a lot of sports and uh, fitness questions. If not, I might be in trouble unless there's Miami Vice questions, 80s music. UMFK Cares Fund provides assistance to students at the University of Maine at Fort Kent for housing, food, heating, travel, clothing, medical, dental, and mental health or support during other emergency situations for basic needs for which the student has no other source of funds. So yeah, we're gonna, hey, let's help out the students. I know I'm gonna make a, a healthy donation for that cause. What a great cause. We have students in this community that just can't leave. They're trapped. So let's help them out. Let's throw them some dollars. Let's have some fun. Rumor has it that uh, Mr. John Coletta is, is going to be a participant, Miss Leslie Marquis. So I already know I can beat those two. And uh, it's just going to be a great time. Without further ado, we do have the deuce, Mr. Steve Doucette. Let's bring him in. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. There he is. Welcome, Mr. Steve Doucette, the Deuce. You are live on Wake Up SJV. How you doing, bud? Great, great. Good morning, uh, Mr. Workin. Very nice to see you. Very nice to see you. You're very professional. We appreciate that. I was curious what you were going to be wearing. Uh, so you got some warrior gear. It is, it is school spirit day for us. How many Zooms do you do in any given day, my friend? <laughs> uh, I would say I'm averaging uh, about three per day. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes Quite a thing. More and sometimes less, but yeah, I would say on the average, at least three. Yeah. Well, I got to say, uh, Mr. Doucette, you continue to impress me. Uh, I, I did not know. Now, all I could find was a, was a performance from 2015. But I didn't realize that Bad Mother Boogie, you guys are you guys are rocking it. You're good. I just listened to a song this morning. We played it live here. You did. Uh, oh. Sorry, yeah, I missed looked, it. <laughs> well, it, it 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 was good stuff. Let me give you a listen here. Hold on. Here we go. You're wrapping up a number here, but there's let's. let's... <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> uh, Mr. Doucette, where was this? It looks like, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I do. Yeah, th th that was our, um, that's our original uh, studio, which uh, is in St. Agatha uh, at Nick Burse's house uh, from Burse Farms. Um, he's our lead singer. And uh, that was, uh, we called it The Well uh is in the basement <laughs> and uh that was that was a, a nice little studio that was built in a matter of uh of days uh you know him and josh bernier and uh they they did uh yeah they literally made a whole room put the electrical and everything and uh since then uh we've expanded to uh, the studio that i have here uh which you've been in um, I believe, uh, I think I have a dent in my ceiling from, uh, your, 
your head uh, where it hit at one time when we were kind of rocking out there. But uh, we were. Yep, we had uh, my we had we had both my daughters in there with both your children, and it was just <laughs> they were. They were rocking, they were but I don't know why, but uh, our studios just have very low ceilings and there's not much <laughs> for me. So I feel bad that for anyone that's uh, taller than, uh, you know, six, two or whatever, but, uh, but uh, not there. These are uh, great areas where we get to go and jam and um, really collaborate and have a lot of fun and let the creative juices flow. And, you know, we're learning a lot of, um, cover songs and then uh, we've been working on some some of our own originals as well but we're also darn busy that we're not much of our stuff has gotten to fruition uh, as far as the original stuff but we enjoy uh, jamming and uh, these studios are you know we make them so that they're uh, nice and quiet so we're not blasting away our the rest of our family and uh, it's a great place to to melt your stress away and be creative yeah, you know, it's, it's, I was just thinking, it's amazing how we all have these passions and these things, you know, for me, it's coaching yep. and, but then you get a family and you get obviously a career and that kind of changes these things, but then you keep it going in some respect. Um, you know, for me, I, I coach at the youth level for you, you still play. You're, you're also in a, a great band that everybody knows staff infection, uh, who, <laughs> <laughs> who, uh, if you have not seen the Battle of the Bands or witnessed that, man, it's incredible, the, uh, the well, stuff that we do here. We do have one of the most uh, entertaining front men that you can ask for in a uh, Mr. John Coletta, <laughs> you know? And uh, we're obviously surrounded by some, some big talent. I mean, we've got Kurt Harvey uh, accompanying me on guitar. We've got, uh, you know, Miss Sylvia Dow. Uh, playing the keyboards. Uh, we've got Mr. Uh, Doug Clapp playing the bass. Uh, we've got Mr. Taylor Martin playing percussion, you know, so uh, I'm surrounded by uh, some some pretty amazing talent and, and, and we have fun. Every every year we, we do that just for the kids. I, I mean, um, because if it, if it was for us, we'd be doing it year round, but we get together once a year for Winter Carnival and basically it's just to entertain the kids and it gives us that connection on a different level, I guess, and shows them that, you know, we're just human beings just like them and we enjoy music like they do. And maybe our music might be a little bit more dated than theirs. <laughs> I'm really, every year, I'm really surprised at how much uh, the kids are in tune with classic rock. You know, we used to, back in my day, we'd go out and buy a whole, Led Zeppelin collection or a whole, you know, nowadays they just stream a song here and a song there or whatever, and they get the best hit songs or whatever, but they're pretty in tune with the music that we play. We see them sing along and stuff, you know, to our classic tunes. The only thing is I consider classic rock like sixties and seventies, they consider <laughs> classic rock eighties, nineties and early two thousands. So that's, uh, yeah, it's amazing. You guys, I, I, you know, I wonder how many, and we should have a high school battle of the bands uh, with staff. You know, I wonder how many other school districts are, but you guys are awesome. Listen, let's change gears here a little bit and, and, uh, and talk about uh, your current role as the Dean of Students. Yep. Uh, listen, tell us, you know, I've seen you at work. I respect and, and really admire what you do on a daily basis, but how has... Mr. Doucette, how has your role as, you know, the primary disciplinarian changed? You know, usually you're chasing students, you're, you're bringing them into your office, you're, you're, you're doing your thing, but now that's remote. So how is remote discipline working for you? Uh, yeah, well, you work very closely to me uh, in, you know, uh, especially around lunchtime. And as you know, uh, we don't even, even our lunches are usually a working lunch uh, and we're getting constant, um, um, you know, interruptions in our, in our workflow, uh, from these, you know, disciplinary, um, incidences and stuff like that. But I have the same administrative work and clerical work that I'm doing every single day. Um, it's just that right now I'm doing it 
for the most part, uninterrupted or not as many interruptions during my day. Um, like right now, we're back at school. Uh, we're only mandated four hours a day at on site and then expected to do at least four hours at home. Uh, but, you know, Mr. Coletta and I have just been doing the full eight hours at work because it's, uh, to be honest, I, I have less uh, interruptions while I'm there. I don't have my kids, uh, you know, uh, poking at me or but uh so and in the way that i'm i'm having to reinvent my position in the way that the way that i'm i'm working with kids uh believe it or not i'm still doing some disciplinary stuff like this week alone i had five cases of plagiarism uh so here i'm addressing this with the teachers i'm addressing it with the parents I'm addressing it with the students. Um, you know, uh, this remote learning is uh, making it rather tempting for um, academic dishonesty. So we have to remind our students that academic honesty and academic integrity is still a big part of what we believe in and what we will, um, uh, you know, what we expect from the students. Um, and unfortunately, in the case where some kids are getting caught, either you know, handing in identical work from others, or they're just simply copy pasting uh, work off online. Uh, you know, we can't tolerate that. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a higher expectation than that. Um, so we're addressing it on a case by case basis. Uh, so anyway, uh, it's been, uh, it's been different, you know, it's, it's been phone calls rather than face to face. And, uh, you know, it's uh, there's been other tasks that have been that have been handed over to me uh, because we've got a lot of new things and um, uh, a lot of a lot of planning going on, whether it's eighth grade promotion, uh, graduation. We don't know what summer school is going to look like. It's like we want to plan for this stuff, but we're kind of, you know, it's it's hurry up and wait kind of thing in, in some areas. Yeah. Uh, we've got three scenarios that we have to plan for for the fall. Uh, we don't know if we're still going to be completely remote like this in the fall or if we're going to have a hybrid of um, remote and certain days at school or we may be full time at school again. Uh, so regardless, no matter what, there's going to be uh, different expectations, different protocols, different um, uh, attendance policies as well. Um, you know, so it's, uh, sorry, I just had to let my wolf in. Times. What's that? I said, sorry, I just had to let my wolf in. Yeah. Um, he's really, listen, cute. he's really cute by the way. Yeah. Thank you. It's a, it's a girl. Okay. It's a girl. Um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Amazing. You know, the, the more we do these interviews, we're, we're wrapping up week two of the show. And, and just to get the, the insight, the behind the scenes, I hadn't thought about plagiarism, but, you know, I was in college and, and that makes sense. It, it's a good lesson for students. Uh, I got to grab a charger. It's a good lesson for students because as you get into college level work or whatnot, you know, that that's more free time. That's more responsibility on students. And you see that at the college level, right? You know what I mean? So that, that's another major thing. Listen, I know you've been working hard, real hard on what graduation is going to look like. So could you talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, eighth grade promotion and, and um, CHS graduation, how those are going to look? Sure. Uh, and things are still you know, um, developing as, as we move forward right now. But what I can say for sure is that obviously like eighth grade promotion will be uh, on June 5 on Friday, uh, June 5 at 10 a.m. Um, unfortunately, we have to do it remotely. We are going to be uh, online. We will be live streaming. Uh, we will do uh, speeches, uh, you know, uh, the usual as as normal as possible, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to, to get the same vibe via remotely, you know, so, um, but everyone's on board. Uh, we've got a couple, 
surprises under our, our, our sleeves here with staff we're, we're discussing right now as far as uh, what we'll, uh, what we'll, we'll be doing for this event, but I don't want to spoil any, any surprises, but I think uh, that's the best we can do for that, you know, uh, given the times that we have. Uh, graduation, uh, you know, I, I, I really feel for all these kids. I mean, it, it's, uh, it, it's a gut-wrenching uh, sense, you know. Uh, my son's in eighth grade, you know, I was looking forward to promoting him, you know, uh, and uh, seeing, you know, the, uh, the more traditional uh, method of, of promotion. Uh, and then they usually had their little promotional dance and, you know, it's, it's a celebratory time of year, but that's not going to happen. Um, the same thing with, uh, the senior class, um, you know, they're, they're not going to have, you know, they missed out on, on their prom, just like the juniors. Um, they're not having their senior week. Uh, it, it's, um, you know, and these are all traditional things that, you know, uh, go way back in our school district. So uh, for graduation, what we have so far, okay, is we're going to be having it outside on the soccer field with your permission, Mr. AD. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have a podium out there. Uh, we're going to have a sound system that we've rented uh, from uh, Glenn Landry, same guy that does the sound uh, and lights for our Battle of the Bands and stuff. Uh, he's going to set up speakers in um, a panoramic type of um, setup where you know everyone can hear clearly. Uh, visually, it might be a little bit difficult because what we're going to have, though, um, we've measured from like where the podium is going to be, and we go out about 182 feet. Okay, we had to use some uh, some math here and figure out what the half the circumference would be in order to get a semicircle. Okay, so we're going to have 182 feet of a radius, and we have a lined out semicircle where cars are going to park. Each senior will be allowed up to two cars. Okay. So in case they have, you know, a um, you know, a, a split family or whatever, or if they have a, a large family, they'll be allowed to bring two cars. Uh, Rudy Martin will be, um, he's been working hard with this too and in, in, in working out the, the grounds plans and stuff. We were out there on the soccer field in that 20, 20 mile an hour wind yesterday trying to make measurements and our, our, our lines were getting caught in the wind and but uh, we have it figured out that every 10 feet, there will be a line indicating where the parking space will be. Now, let me ask you something. Let me yeah. ask you something, because you know our students. I know my students. Uh, you know, we've had, we, you've seen the prom the last few years. You've seen the truck parade. I'm sure you've put, maybe already field this question. What if um, a parent or one of those vehicles uh, is a, a paddy wagon, a, uh, one of those Yukons and they've got 35 people in the back or they, you know, <laughs> has someone called either you or, or Mr. Coletta and said, Hey, can we bring a flatbed trailer and back that up? And yeah, uh, I'm, sure, no, we, I'm sure, I'm sure that's been asked. Do you, do you have to specify what type of vehicle could be? We, in those right. We have addressed that cause we, we know what to expect in Fort Kent, Maine now. Right. So, um, so, we haven't sent this information out yet to the parents, but we, we do have it all in place right now as far as, you know, we're just dotting our I's and crossing our T's. But uh, part of it is, um, you know, no flatbeds. You know, people can bring a pickup and put chairs in the back of their pickup and stuff like that. But, okay, yeah. uh, you know, it's going to be it's going to be, you know, limited to, uh, you know, cars, you know, uh, minivans and pickups and you know, normal recre uh, vehicles like that, no recreational vehicles, no, uh, you know, trailers. And uh, we don't want a fifth wheel out back there and stuff and people camping out. And so uh, what we're going to do though, okay, so semicircle every 10 feet, uh, there's going to be cars. We're going to have the students sit. There's going to be a chair with their name on it and stuff and um, possibly a picture of them too. Uh, 
on the back of the chair so they know exactly where their child is sitting, okay? The students will be sitting in that semicircle, all right? And we're gonna do the graduation uh, like we normally do. We're gonna have, you know, um, uh, the, uh, we're gonna have uh, the procession. We're gonna have the recessional song. We're gonna have the class song. We're gonna have, uh, we might even have a little uh, acoustic uh, music from, from the class as well, a little performance. Uh, again, we're gonna be practicing social distancing with everything. Um, the students will be approximately 20 feet away from each other, okay? Um, but when they come in to get their diplomas, we're gonna have them kind of, you know, line up possibly about 10 feet from each other and come down and grab their diploma off of a table. Um, you know, it, it's, it's different, but I think if we have good weather, uh, this could be, you know, one of our most exciting graduations that we've had because it's so different. We are going to keep the traditional things like, you know, scholarships and awards and all that kind of stuff as part of, of, of that as well and speeches. And um, but we're just going to be a little bit further from each other. You know, we plan on having a rehearsal on Wednesday of that week. Um, and that way, parents know where they're going to be parking ahead of time. Students know will know where they're sitting ahead of time. Uh, just to go through the motions one time at least, you know, just to direct people. Um, and uh, unfortunately, you know, the public won't be allowed to attend. You know, this is going to be, you know, just immediate family or whoever the graduate chooses to be there, but they, they will be limited to two cars only. It will be live streamed. Um, we're going to have uh, Chaz Pelletier working with us on that. He's been incredible for our community in regards to helping us with games and everything else and what a way to end the year and have him live stream our, our graduation you know um yeah he's been awesome after, he's, uh, yeah. oh my gosh yeah so after so, the ceremony we are going to have a parade downtown you know police fire trucks we're going to make as much noise as possible <laughs> we'll have uh that go through town a couple of times. And then we're going to end at Lonesome Pine Trails where cars will park uh, in a horizontal fashion facing the mountain. And we're going to have a wonderful fireworks display to end the evening. And uh, that's not something we've ever had uh, in, at one of our graduations. So I, I think this could be a really neat and cool thing. You know, it's, it's gonna be different though. But I think we've overcome a lot of hurdles uh, and uh, I think we can, you know, if this, we do have a rain date of the following day and even Sunday if we have to. So, you know, we'll have three days to, to, to pick from. Sounds, uh, sounds awesome. And, you know, like so much that we've learned in so many different aspects, um, maybe this changes graduation moving forward, you know, the negative about being in our gym is you're, you're, you're so packed in there. You know, my hair gets messed up. It's so hot. It's yeah, so, right. it's just packed in there. So to be able to look at a different format that we could use possibly moving forward is, is pretty awesome. So I want to thank you um, and the other, the other people that are involved in this planning. It sounds great. Is it 58 seniors? That's correct. 57. 57 okay 57 seniors uh in this year's class so Correct. that that sounds great listen will education ever be the same and 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 obviously we know that's probably not true and how the heck is 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 this going to look in the fall for us can you give us any insight for grades 7 to 12 in the fall i know a lot of this is is week by week month by month but what are you hearing from, from your neck of the woods on, on what it's going to look like in the fall, Mr. Doucette? Okay. Well, in the short, you know, in, in the sh short term, it's not going to look the same. Um, you know, until we have a, a, you know, a vaccine for COVID-19, uh, there's going to be, um, you know, an extra sense of caution there. So we're going to have to, 
um, you know, get around this some way, somehow, whether it's, it, it's going to be fully remote, like we're, we're doing right now, whether it's, like I said earlier, it may be a hybrid uh, to reduce the numbers um, and, or it may be business as usual by then. We really don't know. We're still three months out and, um, you know, just a, a few short months ago, we, it, things were normal and look how drastically they've changed already. So we're waiting for the scientific community to, to come up with uh, that miracle vaccine for, for, for everyone. And, uh, you know, so there's a lot in limbo right now, depending on what happens with our environment. Um, will it ever look the same? I think people will be much more educated in communicable diseases. I think we can um, lower the number of influenza cases even uh, around the world, you know, using these same universal precautions that we're using right now. Um, there's no reason that we're, you know, the flu spreads the way it does. People are just, you know, not taking precautions. It's not cool to wear a mask or it's not cool to be hand sanitizing uh, every, uh, you know, 15 minutes or whatever. So, um, so I think it's going to make people more aware and more cautious and more, um, you know, um, careful as far as, uh, you know, the spread of, of viruses and whatnot. So that'll change. Um, For sure. But uh, sorry, sorry, sorry to, yeah, sorry to interrupt you, but take us through this real quick. If you can see this on the screen, um, this is now available online yep. uh, on the district webpage. There is a, this is amazing work, by the way, but this is the Valley Unified Reintegration Plan timeline. Um, what I call the four R's. Yeah. So you see some, you see some dates. Um, take us, just give us a snapshot. We, we don't have too much time here, sure. uh, but I would encourage everyone who's invested in education to take a look at this because this is well mapped out, but you know, let's start with June 1 through June 26. Um, you know, it, 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 but really, real quick, Deuce, take us through this. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, the, I think this is um, Mr. Peter Karen's uh, wordsmithing here uh, with the four R's. So uh, <laughs> that was a <laughs> creation on his part. Uh, but June 1 to June 26, um, yeah, we're... we're like right now, we're 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 integrating, you know, on-site work again. You know, we're 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 showing up. Like yesterday, you know, pretty much the administration is there every day at school right now, uh, including our uh, guidance counselors uh, that are there right now. They're 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 trying to plan the schedule for next year. Uh, they're reaching out to kids that are, you know, not. Uh, doing what they're supposed to be doing right now. They're doing a lot of phone calls, reaching out. They're doing a lot of SEL work with students and stuff. So they're quite busy still. So it's nice that to be able to work in your own office where you have your filing cabinets and stuff. And, um, and, and we hope that teachers can start resuming that uh, workflow as well. Uh, so we're going to have a gradual return back to, to on-site work. We're not sure yet what summer school is going to look like during, uh, you know, uh, this this time either so we're working on that right now um but mr Doucette, uh, yeah. mr Doucette, sorry to interrupt you again we do have a question here on facebook live uh eric bouchard is asking when and what time is chs graduation we know it's uh june 12th is there a time set for that right now it's tentatively set for seven we weren't sure based on what we wanted to do and how we were going to do it and whether we needed the lights from the field and stuff because we do need the power for other things now we know with the pa system and stuff and then also we don't want it to, to do it too early because if we're going to have a fireworks display you need it to be dark so uh so right now tentatively the it's going to start at 7 p.m sharp okay but that's why things haven't gone out yet officially. It could be that, you know, it's pushed to 7.30 or something like that. So, but right now, tentatively 7 uh, p.m. Okay, great. Thank the you. Question there, Eric. 
Thank you, and thanks for your question, Eric Bouchard, the man. Okay, so the I'm sorry, the four R's. Keep keep rolling here, my Wait, friend. You, got two, you know, the, the you got we're going to have some professional development uh, in the coming days too. After the the last student day, uh, we're going to on June five. We're going to have some professional development. We're going to work all this stuff out with staff as well. Uh, we're going to do some planning for next year. We're going to collect a lot of data. Uh, the resumption phase, uh, basically, uh, this is going to be, um, this is not going to change. You know, what might change is the, you know, the recalibration and the reintegration phases and things like that. Uh, but this is pretty much set in stone. Um, so we're going to have our, our teachers and ed techs prepare for, you know, a wide variety of, of different types of instructions and what the school day might look like in the in the near future. Awesome, thank you. And, and thank you to everyone uh, that's been involved with that, starting with our superintendent, uh, Mr. Ben Sirwa, and then, and then all, there is four teams, you know, for example, I'm on the health and wellness um, safety Correct. team. And that's, people need to realize that's Valley Unified wide. So that's all different types of players uh, from each district and what a way to bring us together uh, and, and to work on this. I know there's some other, as an athletic director and a phys ed teacher, there are other schools and other districts asking what we're doing uh, because it seems like we're, we're, you know, to pat our own backs, but we're kind of ahead of the game here, which is, which is good to hear. So, you know, I, I hate to compare it to other school districts and stuff, you know, statewide or whatever, but I mean, we are, um, quite progressive and we, we are ahead of the curve for sure. And that's thank, thanks to our leadership, uh, you know, including our superintendent, Mr. Ben Sirwai. And we are surrounded by so much talent in this valley uh, that it's, it's nice that we're finally pooling our resources uh, amongst three districts rather than uh, doing our own thing. I, I, how we did that in the past seems foreign to me already, you know, because we've been working so closely together and uh, it, it's been really nice. Um, I will say though that um, we do have a lot of bright shining stars in, in our in our school districts, and you're definitely one of them, Mr. Work. And the amount of um, you know public relations that you've been doing uh, for our community, these live streams here, the turning on of the lights every Friday, uh, you, you you've kept us afloat and. Uh, You've been a motivation to me and many others uh, in the last three months here. Uh, you, you know, you, your work has been incredible, incredible. So thank you. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate that, Deuce. Uh, you know, and, and like you said, um, right when we started this interview, it's all about the kids. It's about the students. Listen, you've got two children at home. You mentioned Braden is an eighth grader. Yep. Uh, you have you have Reese, who is the same age as my daughter. They're good friends. Yeah, yeah. And then your wife is a is a teacher at at uh, MSAD thirty three. Yep. How how are you both able to juggle all this? So you're um, you know you're an administrator. She's a teacher. You've got two children that are trying to learn remotely. How has that been personally for your family? It's been a struggle. <laughs> I'm going to be uh, upfront and, and, and transparent here, but it's been a real struggle. Um, you know, it's requiring my, my wife to work, uh, you know, even though she was working 12 hours a day before, including weekends and taking classes and during the summer and whatnot. And it, it, it's, for the amount of time they had to learn how to get around this and teach from home and everything and going down to SW Collins to buy whiteboards, you know, and uh, it, it's, uh, it was done rather quick. And I have to say, I'm pretty proud of her and all the teachers out there that have been teaching from home, uh, you know, doing it through Zoom. They're doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one tutorials too, because they don't have that warrior time. They don't have after school time with the kids or before school or during lunch. So they're having to meet with them like this here. And they're having half hour, sometimes one hour sessions with just one or two kids uh, that are struggling. Uh, they're emotionally, uh, you know, struggling as well uh, because this is making it so difficult to reach out to the kids. I mean, 
let's face it, they didn't go into this career because uh, they were going to uh, get rich out of it. They did it because it's a calling, it's a passion. And part of that is that student connection. You're not able to do that when you're working from home. Uh, you know, and the kids, the teachers know the kids and they sense when the kids are in need and stuff and struggling. And uh, so there's an emotional drain there. Uh, and then just, you know, how teachers always say it's more work to plan for a sub than it is to just do the work. Well, basically, yep. they're doing that every day where they have to plan, you know, strategically for each, you know, class that they're doing to try to make it, you know, uh, entertaining, to try to make it uh, worthwhile and valid. And so it's tough. It's really tough. They've been working longer hours than ever. As far as the kids, it's tough for them too, because they're trying to do their work. Uh, you know, dad's on a zoom meeting in one room and mom's teaching in another room and they're on the couch, you know, <laughs> fending for themselves, you know, doing their work and, uh, a lot of, uh, distractions at home too. Uh, but, uh, and they're missing that social interaction big time. My kids want to be back in school, man, you know, uh, it, it's, that's the biggest thing. Uh, it's, it's the, um, it, you know, obviously the education is awesome, you know, and I agree with you. The teachers are really doing a great job, but uh, the social piece is really what we're missing. And that's the hard thing. Uh, but there are ways around that. You know, I love the, I love the zoom parties or the Facebook parties or the, and I know students are trying to do that. I've seen my daughters do it. Um, you know, just a way to stay connected to their friends, man, um, is, is, is the biggest thing. But it's really a, a great challenge. But you guys make a great pair, you and your wife. Um, you, you've got great kids. Um, you know, obviously, stay positive there. I want to change gears. We're, we're running out of time, but you're the member of two bands, man. So who's better? Bad Mother Boogie, Boogie <laughs> or Staph Infection? Well, who's better? Come on. I'll say that they're different. Uh, oh, okay. Politically <laughs> correct. <laughs> Bad, Bad Mother Boogie, I would say, is more of the polished band because we've been playing. Oh, my gosh. We've been together for at least eight, nine, ten years maybe or something. So, obviously, there's a chemistry there that you can't reproduce just by, you know, jamming for a week or so with a, another band. But uh, the level of excitement that I get in each band is, is equal, man. I have so much fun playing with these, uh, with these amazing people. Now, when you started Staff Infection, we can make a movie out of this, like, like uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Did Bad Mother Boogie members get upset with you that the lead guitarist is now cheating uh, on Bad Mother Boogie with Staff Infection? I mean, this is... <laughs> We could start a movie here, like uh, we could do an hour-long Netflix right, right, right. <laughs> documentary. Where are they now? Um, no, but um, I, I didn't. I was not part of the inception of Staff Infection. The original uh, people were uh, Mr. Coletta and uh, Mr. Clapp that are still in the band. We had uh, other faculty back in the day. That was before I was even there. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think Mr. Charles Pelletier, who uh, is no longer uh, teaching with us anymore, but he was the, um, I, I, I believe he was the guitar player. Uh, and we had uh, a music teacher in there. We had, you know, there was different people. But anyway, so I was in staff infection before I was in Bad Mother Boogie. So it's okay. the other way around, actually. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Now, listen, we featured, uh, since I got us in trouble uh, during week one, I was playing like 80s videos and, and uh, so YouTube got upset with us. So since then, it's triggered this local music featuring every day, which I love. Uh, I'm done okay. playing. I'm done playing that stuff. There's so so uh, we featured Empty Head, awesome. French Toast. French toast. Uh, Travis Sear this week by recommendation Thanks. from Nicole Jondro. Travis is incredible. Yesterday was um, Adam Neto. Yep. Who we who we we played. Today obviously is Bad Mother Boogie. 
Um, do you have any other recommendations on local artists that we could start featuring? We're gonna we're gonna create a hub, so to speak, where we can we can have all this music housed. Um, but do you have some other artists that we can add to this list? Absolutely. Um, well, hmm. well, there is Adam Ouellette from Madawaska, who is a solo artist. Uh, okay. But lately, he's been doing uh, Friday evening shows with. Uh, uh, CJ Terrio from Fort Kent here, where CJ is doing like percussion and Adam's doing either acoustic guitar or keyboards and singing. Um, and right. so How do you guys just speak? they've been playing regularly uh, almost every week. Uh, and uh, it's a good way to end the week sometimes. Um, you know, we'll, we'll play that in the background and just gives us a sense of some normalcy. Um, Let's see. There's not a whole lot. Oh, well, there is uh, another local band, uh, Boomerang, who is yes. a like classic rock uh, band. Bunch of great, great guys. Love them. Um, Mr. Pietro recommended Boomerang yesterday. So yeah, you guys are yeah. on the same, you're on the same page with something. We've been, uh, you know, in all our recordings and stuff are, are from, you know, the Blues and Jazz Festival and, 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 you know, other snippets that people have recorded and put on our website, which is on Facebook, by the way, Bad Mother Boogie, if anyone. Yes, we it did out. plug that this morning. Yeah. Do, you, uh, do you remember, um, there was a good band back in the day, now I'm dating myself here, but 20 years ago, uh, John Clavette had a band. Do you remember the name of that band? Oh, man. Wasn't it like Trippin' Daisies or Billies or Willies or what the heck was the name? Anyway, that was a... I, remember I just remember that. John Clavette as the, a solo artist now, but I forget uh, what the name... I'm just going to put John Clavette's band and we're going to find out if anybody out there listening yeah, knows. Yeah. But they were good. I remember them. But anyway, yeah. we're going to keep doing that. And I think it's a great That's way, awesome. Mr. Doucette, to really promote local artists uh, we're rolling them out now every morning here, and uh, hopefully people either watch this live or they watch it archived and, and they pick up on your band or other bands. And another and band that's part of uh, <laughs> we're, we're we reunited last year after 20 years. We used to play around here quite a lot, you know, back when Edna and Camille's was in town and uh, the hotel and all these places, you know, BJ's. And uh, this band was called Revolver. And, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so I, we have something on Facebook as well. Uh, we reunited last year after like a 20-year anniversary kind of thing. And we, uh, we do have some live footage there, I believe, from a few festivals. So we, di we just did a handful of gigs last year just for fun in the summer. And that was, that was a great uh, time, you know. Uh, the bass player is a, a police officer from Madawaska now. And, uh, you know, the drummer ha is a business owner in Madawaska. The singer is from Presque Isle, works for SAD1. Uh, so, uh, you know, all great people as well. And awesome. I just love how music brings people together. And it's kind of like, a you know, an extended family. So, yeah, so that's something else. Um, God, I hope I'm not forgetting. That. There you go. Listen, Revolver. That us? Oh, oh, that's something our bass player put together as a like a montage. That's not even our our music <laughs> in the background. <laughs> we we teased him about that. We're like, what were you doing? He's like, well, I just wanted to post pictures of uh, of our gig. I said, well, you could at least put our our music in the background, you know. So that's not our music. We can't take credit for that. But um, I think gotcha. there's some there's some some videos from from people that uh, have re recorded them at our gigs. But uh, so anyway. Well, thank you so much for highlighting all this stuff and, you know, oh, for and, sure. and for everything could, uh, that you're doing. And, and I love what you've been doing with your phys ed students and all these challenges and stuff. And, uh, you know, man, you're an inspiration, Mr. Workin. Well, likewise, it's a, it certainly is a pleasure to work with you and now side by side remotely, my friend, but we better don't days do are coming together anymore. But uh, usually that uh, was the time when we connect and take care of a lot of AD stuff and sports, athletic stuff. But 
Yeah, listen, we're really looking forward to um, eighth grade promotion, uh, June 5th, and then uh, graduation. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us. I want to wish your family the best. And uh, Braden is really, does he catch dinner on a weekly basis? I mean, that kid is a fishing machine. So have him keep it up. Uh, yeah. But thanks for joining us. I know we went over a little bit today on Friday, but I want to thank you and, uh, and and have a great day and a great weekend, my friend. Thank you and to you as well. And um, everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and keep your spirits up. Better days coming. Awesome. Thank you. That was the Dean of Students, Mr. Steve Doucette. Take care. I want to thank him for joining us this morning. We have about six minutes left here as uh, our producer, Chaz Pelletier, has allowed us to go about 10 minutes over today. Uh, in closing, I want to promote once again, Bad Mother Boogie, Revolver, Staff Infection. You can Facebook Bad Mother Boogie. You can Facebook Revolver. Check them out. Great, great music. Coming up this evening, we have Friday night warrior lights that will start at 8 20 the clock and the lights will roll for 20 minutes 20 seconds also remember that tonight is a benefit it is the umfk cares virtual trivia and that's hosted by no nonsense's nico so we're looking forward to that what is the time on that? I believe that starts 7.30. Anyway, that starts tonight. So that's a great benefit, a, 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 you know, a great cause. If you're financially able, please make a, a, a donation. Any monetary amount will help these UMFK students who are, for lack of a better phrase, trapped here. Uh, but it's a great place to be trapped, by the way. Coming up next week, we will keep rolling Monday through Friday. Boomerang will be the featured band, as long as I can find footage and music on them. But Boomerang will roll out Monday. The guest list is currently being worked on for next week. Uh, and we will reveal that over the weekend. I want to wish everybody a great weekend. The weather's going to be awesome. Get outside, be active, and practice safe.